a lot of people know the clips for Lord Willen. Right. But there was another album before that called Exclusive Audio Footage. For sure. For sure. So th- how did that deal come together and what happened to that whole situation? Well, uh, Exclusive Audio Footage was actually the first album that we did with the Neptunes. Uh, we messed around and we got signed with Elektra. Um, we have the shortest rap struggle ever because it took us no time to get a rap deal. I think we got our rap deal within a year. Uh, our manager at the time, Rob Walker, always told us that we would never be able to tell anybody about the hard struggle and how you know, we came out getting a deal, this, that, and the third because we got a deal in like no time. Uh, Sylvia Rohn signed us uh, to Elektra, but um, you know, it, it really didn't go anywhere at the time because the hot items at that time was Buster and uh, Missy Elliott, and all the focus were 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 on them. But uh, I will say, to um, on behalf of Sylvia Rohn, she played fair. She didn't keep us around. She didn't leave us stuck at a label signed, you know, because she could have done that, but. She uh she liked our talent and she felt like we sh- could go somewhere else and get another deal. So she let us go in and that's what we did. Okay, so you guys are down with the Neptunes. That's right. The the first the first album gets put together, completed, but it gets shelved. Right, it right. never never comes out. Right, right, right. So then the second deal was with what label? Oh man, bro, you have to understand like. This whole rap career thing for me is like one big blur, so you're gonna have to bear with me. It's like so much stuff I don't even remember. Uh, It's a lot of things I don't even care to remember, but I think from there we went to Arista, I believe. Arista, right. Yeah. And and that was through Star Trek? Yes, yes, through Star Trek. Okay, so you guys, I mean, was it was this somewhat frustrating putting a whole album together and then just scrapping it and never coming out? Well, you know, actually, when I when I found out that that it was that we were um, no longer signed or no longer with the label or weren't going to be with the label, we were actually uh, on a plane just coming back from New York. So you can only imagine, you know, your family, friends, everyone knowing that you're signed, and then it it all going downhill. And I think in in that same weekend we had a show. Uh, at this at this place called Shadows, um, and everybody was out celebrating, and and everybody came out to see us perform, but they didn't I, they didn't know that we weren't you know we weren't even signed anymore. So you know we had to go through that like we stars, but we don't even have a deal. Okay, so, so you guys start putting together Lord Willen, right? Right, right, right. And you know by this time, the Neptunes and Pharrell. They they had they had a few a few hits like I think uh, like Rump Shaker was was one of their hits right. like early on right Rump Shaker uh, S W V um, I can't even think of the song but yeah that you know they had a hit yeah. S W V they they had a, they had a few songs and they're they're working with Teddy Riley at the time as absolutely well. yes yeah so you know people think of the Neptunes now. But they weren't the Neptunes as we know them back then. They were still, you know, up and coming producers. Right. right. So, you guys put together this project for for Lord Willen, and this is this is now your second album, and the first single is "Grinding," right? Right. right. And I, I remember this was like two thousand two. Well, the album came out in 2002, so it, it could have been like the end of 2001. Yeah. That record actually took nine months to break, so, you know, you can kind of count backwards. So so Grinding was, was kind of this very interesting kind of anomaly when it comes to music, because it was essentially just a drum beat. Right. Right? And you had two kids rapping about, you know, about the drug game on it. And it just became a huge hit. It was, you know, it it didn't have the formula of a typical hit song, but it it started to just kind of take off. I remember I was living in the Bay Area and all the clubs were playing it. It it just, it just did its thing. Did you have any idea that Grinding was even going to do anything? 
Well, it's actually a story behind that because, you know, Pharrell had called me when he had just got finished making it and said, you know, to hurry up, get to the studio now. I got this. I mean, come to Chad's house now. Got this uh, beat. It's crazy. This, that, and the third. So I remember stopping everything I was doing and, uh, and I went to Chad's house and met with my brother there and, and listened to the track. And I totally did not understand it. Like, I was like, yo, it needs something else. Like, it's, you know, it's not complete. It's, it's, it's not finished. And he was like, he was just so sure of himself and he knew what it was. He was like, nah, I'm telling you, this is it. Trust me, just trust me on this one. So we went, we wrote to it. We actually wrote to, to Grindin twice. You know, I guess till we finally uh, laid hold on to, to what it actually was. Because right offhand, I didn't know because it was, like you say, it was so different. And I had never heard anything like that before. But once I found myself on it, I knew exactly what it was, you know. Right. Because even the chorus was like Pharrell just going grinding. Like it wasn't even like a, a traditional chorus by, by right. any stretch. Right, 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 definitely. And, and you know, it was like playing Double Dutch trying to figure out how to come in on that track. I didn't even, you know, for, for so long we would do shows and I'm like, is it, is it time for my part yet? Like I didn't know when I came in because I, I never had really mastered it. Even if I was to do a show now, I probably would still have that little stutter step, you know, but yeah, definitely different. So that song comes out, and it blows the fuck up. It does. How did and by that time you guys have been in the game like, uh, you know, for what five? I mean, hold on, because your first deal. Was that was in, that was like ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, so five about five years or so. Yeah, yeah, about okay. five years. How did it feel to have a hit song after five years of grinding? No, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I get it. You know, I really, I really, I don't even think I understood where I was at at the time. You know, I, I really don't think, um, I think even more so now, looking back, I see where we were at that time. You know, more so now than I did at the time. Uh, at the time, it was like a, a, a big whirlwind. You go from living everyday life to you know, on tour and, and, and traveling and performing these shows and, you know, everybody just loving the song and, and, and loving your music. So, you know, I didn't really grasp what it was at the time, even though, you know, I enjoyed it, definitely. Okay. And, and that song is essentially about selling cocaine. From top to bottom. So now it's like the clips are, you know, the guys who do the coke raps. Right. It, it's, right. it kind of... You know, whether you guys had other subjects at the time, you guys are now kind of in that box in a way. Uh, how did it feel, you know, and, and you guys, you know, and, and based on, you know, what we've talked about, you guys were not major kingpin drug dealers. Right. Uh, how did it feel at that point in your life to be, you know, the, the drug dealer rappers? Well, uh, it wasn't until, see, I always call it the perfect storm. Because you have to understand, like, ever from 15, we knew about selling drugs. From 15, you know, pushing even younger because I was older. And by the time, and, and we could rap. And so by the time we get with the Neptunes, and by the time that, you know, we're making the, these, these rap records, it was just like the perfect storm to talk about what you know about. And, and having, the, having these beats, the way it came together, it was just, it only made total sense. It could not have went any other way. Um, it wasn't until it was some article that described us as coke rappers. And when I heard it, I felt as though I'm like, I know my intellect supersedes, you know, just this coke. But then I had to be like, yo, that is all y'all talk about. You know, that that's all you talk about. And was so good at it because all of our friends and everybody that we were around, even when we went elsewhere, uh, I guess the D-boys in, in, in different states could relate and there's just a certain jargon, it's a certain lingo that we just understood and people knew that them guys really had something to do with that, you know? So it was, it in itself became uh, an art form. Were you bothered at the time because of it or were you cool with it at the time no i mean like i said when i seen the article it was a big article too 
And uh, I just felt like there was just so much more to us. But, you know, we were pigeon held, I guess, you know? Yeah. And uh, when I first heard it, I was I was bothered. You know, I even had made mention of it or whatever. But, you know, right after that, it was just right back to it. I just knew it was just so much more. We, we have so much more. Uh, right. But, you know... Your, your Ryan partner, his his name is Pusher T. Right, 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 right. You know, your name is Malice at the right, time. Right, right. So there is sort of, you guys are creating your own kind of, you know, drug dealer, negative type of, you know, persona right. amongst amongst yourselves. And why, why was the, the name of the group called Clips? Well, the, it was full of clips, actually. And, and at the time, uh, Fat Joe had a crew called full of clips something you know right if, if, <laughs> okay. I'm, if i'm not mistaken so we we didn't want to step on no toes especially not with the terror squad at the time you know so we we just called ourselves the clips and what we always said was we just wanted to to you know cast a shadow on this industry and black out everything else 